Singet ke nak ak tu sha yu khat du asak. Tleka ke nak mishiana hetrasin yu khat du asak. Yech na hetzati. Sinedi ayachat. Huzida Juan ayachat. Alberta Aspen yu du asak ak flik. Kashkani yu du asak ak fla. Tuch kayedi ayachat. I want to start by saying something a little risky and likely unpopular, but please bear with me and I promise. Well, I hope that it will make sense by the time that I'm through. Elizabeth Paradovich did an amazing thing. She did an honorable thing. She did a very brave thing. But what she did was not special. Don't get mad at me, remember? Bear with me. We're gonna make it all make sense. We're here today celebrating her and the gift that she was able to give us all the gift of equality. Events are being held in her honor across the country. Awards are being given out in her name. Her face is on actual US currency to celebrate what she did and what she represents, which is wonderful, it's beautiful, but it's not at all what Elizabeth had on her mind when she did what she did for us. She wasn't looking to be special. She wasn't looking for awards. She didn't care if her face was on a coin. She cared about her children getting a quality education. She cared about her people, our people having housing. She cared about Alaska Natives having access to healthcare and other community resources. She cared about being able to walk into a store without being discriminated against or being relegated to the equivalent of a dog in the eyes of her neighbors. She cared about being treated as human and ensuring that we were all guaranteed that same basic right. So special isn't the word that I'd ever use to describe what she did. And I have a hard time believing that's how she'd describe it either. The day she stood up in that legislative session and rebuked Senator Shattuck and his colleagues for their derogatory statements and discriminatory standings, she was supposed to be there as an observer as a support to her husband, who was a leader of the Alaska Native Brotherhood. She was only 33 years old when she delivered her famous remarks. She was a young woman in a room full of older men. She was a native person in a room full of mostly white people. She was the least credentialed person in there too, but she was the most prepared by a long shot. She was prepared because she lived the discrimination that they were there to discuss. While the older white men were debating policy, she was debating her and her children's quality of life. Her whole heart and soul were in that room. Her ancestors and her descendants were in that room. And she wasn't there to impress anyone but them. So what I take from Elizabeth's story and what I hope we all take is that you don't have to be special to do what's right. You don't have to be the oldest or the most book smart or the most important person in the room to accomplish your goals or to carve a new path toward greater equality for all. Who you are right now is enough. It's not only enough, it's exactly what the world needs. The future generations need the you of right now in this moment because you are the living legacy of Elizabeth's greatest hopes. You are the voice that will create the next generation's reality. Our ancestors and descendants aren't looking to see who will end up with their face on a coin or gain the most accolades or get the most likes on Facebook. They're looking to see who will speak for them from the heart for the greatness of us all. So in the words of another ancestor that I look up to, David Katzik, King Yeti, it is within you. Gunachish Hawa Duikshisham. Ooh, Mishiana. Gunachish Hawa for taking on the, us on that journey through your perspective and the power of your voice. That reminder, it should not take 
all of those quote unquote significant things in order for a person to have a voice and be heard in the halls of governance. And Elizabeth Paradovich 